Well, can you tell? I'm not in Atlanta anymore. Welcome to our worship this morning. Glad to have you with us. Patricia is here with me. We're in a condominium on the coast of South Carolina. And I see the gym is joining. And I hear loud noises. So let me make sure that the volume is down. There we go. Yeah, we got people joining us. Glad that you're here. Um, we welcome you from the great state of South Carolina this morning. We're on vacation, but I don't mind at all stopping to talk with you all for a few minutes and have worship with you this morning from the beach. I can't, uh, I can't show you the beach because every time I point the camera toward the beach, I turn into a shadow. And then when I point it at me, the beach turns into a whitewash. So I'm just sitting here looking out and looking at you and it's time to start. Tell me if, um, hey everyone, hey, hey Ruby, hey Marlene, hey Donna, hey Jim. Very truly I say unto you, I don't mean to insult you or offend you this morning when I say this. Without air, this condominium can't breathe. Without light, this condominium can't perceive. You must have breath. You must have light. Or you cannot see the beach. You feel insulted? You feel a little bit talked down to? Does it sound like I'm pulling Dr. Seuss on you? Or I'm trying to sound deep, but it's really just shallow? I'm afraid Nicodemus felt that way. I have long loved this story in John 3 and Nicodemus came to visit Jesus and Jesus kept talking to him about stuff and it was just sailing right past him throughout the entire conversation he never gets it he never gets it and the irony of that is that Nicodemus is probably smarter than you and me he was trained in Jerusalem it says in the very first verse now there was a Pharisee Pharisee, that's a doctor of the law. I mean, he's got the equivalent of a doctorate in theology or scripture. And uh, it says he was a leader of the Judeans, which means he was trained in Jerusalem. He's from Judea. This, you know, the Apostle Paul was trained by Gamaliel, sitting at his feet and learning there in Jerusalem, even though he was from Tarsus. People came from all over the world to study in Jerusalem and be as smart as Nicodemus and get the credentials that he got. And Jesus says things to him that sounds like Dr. Seuss. Sounds like the old Dick and Jane uh, first grade reader, you know. The thing, the thing that really surprises me about this, and I'm not sure I, if I didn't just actually really see this for the first time when I was looking at this this morning as I sat out on the deck and watched the uh, painted buntings fly by. It says here that he came to Jesus by night. And then it says that he said to Jesus, we know you come from God. And Jesus begins to talk to him about babies being born. Now, what does that have to do with anything? Well, it was confounding to Nicodemus too, but I, what I want to propose to you here is that Jesus didn't have a planned speech. This guy shows up and visits Jesus at the house one night. Maybe there's more with Nicodemus because he, he keeps saying, we, we know you're a great teacher. We've seen the signs that you performed. Um, he, he keeps using we. Now, that could be the royal we, uh, you know, formally speaking in, in rhetoric, we. But I think probably some of these Pharisees got together and it's just Nicodemus is speaking for them. Maybe he's the leader. It says he was a leader of the Judeans. So why does Jesus all of a sudden start talking about birth? Because Nicodemus is, is giving him that message. Jesus sees with kingdom eyes. And he sees things that are right in front of his nose that we miss. The kingdom is all around us. The kingdom is right in front of us, and some can't see it. 
Some can't hear it. It's beyond their perception. And perhaps for Nicodemus, and this is true for all people, I suppose, who tend to lean on their intellect, as I do, uh, sometimes it's the smart people who have the hardest time seeing the kingdom, which is ironic because most of the time we think, well, the smarter you are, the better you understand these things of God. Well, it doesn't work like that. Um, why did he bring up birth? Because he saw Nicodemus not meaning to, but bringing it up. Look, here this guy shows up where? He shows up wherever Jesus is staying. It doesn't say exactly where, but he shows up. Jesus must be in Jerusalem for some reason or nearby. He shows up and it specifically, John specifically says he came by night. Now, John doesn't want you to just think about that at one level. Uh, multiple levels are important, not only for Jesus, but the way that John writes John's gospel. He wants you to see it both literally and both metaphorically or parabolically there are multiple layers to this thing it says uh he came by night now think about it what if an unborn baby on the day of its birth think i think in terms of let's say you're an ancient person you don't know anything about reproduction human reproduction anatomy and biology you ain't got a clue but in your mind, you don't have to be a genius or a doctor to know that probably a baby can't see. It's inside of the mother. It's dark in there. So I think maybe John is letting us know what Jesus saw. He saw that Nicodemus, though brilliant and smart, had come at night. Meaning not only had he probably come at night because he didn't want anybody to see this great doctor of the law coming to visit Jesus, this, this guy with dust on his shoes from Nazareth. Can anything good come from Nazareth? I mean, maybe he came by night with the others because it might not have done his uh, scholarly reputation any good amongst his buddies. Um, these colleagues might not have appreciated or understood why he was going over to ask questions of this rabbi. You know, he should be asking questions of us. We're the experts. You ask us questions. But it didn't work out that way. They, for some reason, these learned men who had been for years and years and years doing what they do, with knowing the language and the law inside out, doing what they do, they went to see Jesus. They were looking for something which is extraordinary if you think about it. How, how do you impress someone that smart and that religious? How religious and smart do you have to be to impress the experts? Well, they must have been impressed by something. Nicodemus says, we know you come from God, the, the language, come from, like a baby comes from the mother's womb. My, my favorite answer for um, when kids ask, well, where do babies come from? My favorite answer is not the stork or the cabbage patch, although I've heard those two. My favorite answers are um, one is factual and one is true to me. One is the factual one is they come from babies. Babies come from mommy's tummy. The other answer is babies come from God. So Jesus is sitting there with this guy in the dark who really wants to be born spiritually and he sees it, he tastes it, he feels it, it's in the room. Jesus has kingdom eyes. He can see that Nicodemus and whoever's with him, if he's got his buddies with him, he can see that they're there for a reason. They came because they, they felt something when he was teaching. They, they saw something when he performed a sign. Um, they, he has their attention, but he also knows they're in the dark. It just says right before this story, the very verse before this story about Nicodemus, it says that a lot of people believe Jesus because of the signs that he was doing. They like those miracles. Oh, we're wild by Jesus. Give us another miracle. Put on a show. But it says here specifically that he would not entrust himself to people like that who believe because of the signs. He would not entrust himself to people like that because he knew that they were still in darkness. They weren't seeing the light because the signs were not the point. They were not the end. The signs, like any sign, like it points to a reality. If you see a stop sign, you know that means you're supposed to stop. It conveys meaning. 
So when he healed someone, it was conveying meaning. He healed a blind man. It was conveying the meaning of, do you want to see? When he healed someone who was crippled, do you, do you want to be free to move and go where you want to? You, you, you can't speak. He heals you. That's so that you can communicate the truth. Speak the truth. There's layers of meaning here that, you, that, you, that we miss because uh, as modern people, we're so factually based. We want to know what happened, what time it happened, who was there, who were the witnesses. We document. And that's good. That's great for history especially. But does it get at meaning? Does it insult you when Jesus speaks in metaphors about things that you don't see? Or is it just infuriating? Insulting, infuriating are not the responses that usually lead to enlightenment. But this is Jesus' approach. Like if I point up there to this vent and I say something like, you cannot breathe without air. Or if I point to this light and say, you cannot see without light. Well, you either think I'm an idiot or I'm talking down to you. But what if Jesus is really saying something here we aren't seeing? What if Nicodemus isn't getting it and, and neither do we in our blindness? Something's happening here and I, I don't want to miss it. So I'm working it with you here. Let me work it with you for just a minute. Nicodemus comes at night in darkness. He's looking for light. He thinks maybe Jesus has got it. Maybe he's felt something burning in inside of him and he just knows Jesus is the way to wake up and figure this thing out. But he's so cranial, he's thinking that, okay, well, first of all, I'm going to address him as rabbi because I don't want him thinking that I'm coming here to ambush him. Rabbi, he addresses him formally and respectfully. Rabbi, that's, that's a compliment, Jesus. I'm, I'm not putting you down. I'm not here to cause trouble. I'm here because I know you're a teacher. Rabbi, he says, we know you're a teacher who has come from God. So again, we're not here to bash you. This is not an ambush. We get it that you're from God. Because no one can do what you're doing. These signs that you're performing apart from God. And I don't know if Nicodemus stopped there and just stared at Jesus to make sure he was understanding what he was saying or if Jesus interrupted him. I don't know which it was. But then Jesus answered him, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born again. I'm not going to get into the whole what the word anathen means, whether it's again or from above. That doesn't matter for this angle on this story. Let's just go with born again. Well, if I'm Nicodemus, I'm thinking, well, why is he bringing up birth? We're full grown men probably standing up on the roof of a house under the stars, discussing theology and trying to come to terms with how to live a righteous life and what's good and evil and what's the right thing to do, what's the lawful thing to do. Uh, you know, the theological discussion, just like a lot of theologians would have. What is, who brought up birth? Well, Nicodemus is in the dark. That's why he can't see that he's brought up birth. He showed up there because he wants to be born. He just doesn't know it yet. He showed up there in the dark because he's not yet out of the womb. He can't see. And being inside of the womb, one of the miracles, if you're an ancient person and trying to figure out how babies get stay alive inside their mother, how do they breathe? They're in water. How do you breathe in water? Nobody can breathe in water. Well, babies, apparently, if you're an ancient person, you're thinking, wow, babies not yet born, can breathe in water. But they've got to be born out of the water into the real world out here in the air. And if they're going to live and everything goes right, they also have to be born of breath. Interestingly enough, the word for breath is also the word for wind. And the word for wind is also the word for spirit. It's pneumata in Greek. And Jesus is about to tell Nicodemus, you've got to be born of the Spirit, meaning you've got to breathe. You've got to be born of the Spirit. Be like the wind. Breath and wind. Spirit. 
Okay, that's where he's going. He wants Nicodemus to get there, but Nicodemus is still in the womb. He's still in the water. He's not yet been born. Right now, he's in the water. He's in the dark. But he showed up at this house for the, to talk to this rabbi who is messing with his heart and messing with his head. And he's like, what is he talking about? I know it's true. My heart tells me it's true. My gut tells me it's true, but he's not making a lick of sense here. Just, Jesus, let's just talk doctrine, okay? First of all, what's your doctrine of God, okay? Uh, what's your doctrine of salvation? How do you understand the coming kingdom of heaven? And what's your view on resurrection? I can see Jesus, I can see them wanting Jesus to talk about these things. So he comes in in the dark. And Nicodemus and probably some buddies with him, he speaks for them because it says he's the leader. And he says, we know, Rabbi, we know you're from God because we've seen what you've been doing. And then he pauses, or maybe Jesus interrupts and says, yeah, but you can't see anything of the kingdom. Obviously, you can't see it right now because you have not been born you have to be born again. And Nicodemus looks at him and says this. Okay, is that the game we're playing? Okay, fine. That's the game we're playing. We're going we're gonna to play this metaphor out. Okay, I'll just pretend to be a literalist for a minute. You can't be born again if you're a full-grown adult guy. Okay? You can't go back into the womb and be born again. You won't fit. It doesn't work. I assume you mean this metaphorically, so maybe you're eventually going to get around to explaining what the heck you're talking about. The condo breathes, the condo sees. Okay, fine. But what do you mean? It's a metaphor. I get it. You like metaphors. I'm not here for metaphors. I don't want a metaphor. I want the truth. I know you have it. Why won't you tell me the truth? And he's telling him the truth. He just doesn't have ears yet to hear. He doesn't have eyes with which to see. He hasn't yet been born of the Spirit. He's, he's being born of water because babies come from water. But he's going to be born of the Spirit. What, what, what Jesus? He's going to figure it out eventually. I really think Nicodemus figured it out eventually. And I think he probably he was even more frustrated and embarrassed, maybe angry, when he figured out what Jesus was doing to him. Listen, listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this verse. You know this verse. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while the wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Okay, this is Genesis 1-1. What's it about? It's about the birth of the world. How is the world born? It's born from waters into the breath of God, from water to breath. Do you understand what I'm saying? Are, are you considering the possibility that Jesus is actually saying to Nicodemus, I know you're smart, I know you've been to school, but you don't understand Genesis 1.1. I hate to take you back there, it's like handing you the Jack and Jill first grader reader, and you've got a diploma on the wall that says PhD, Doctor of Ministry, Doctor of Theology. I, I get it that this is probably insulting to you for me to tell you this, but I don't think you got 101. I don't think you got God 101. This is Genesis 1-1. The wind from God, the breath from, it's the same word in, in Hebrew too, ruach. It means breath, wind, or spirit. The spirit of God, the wind of God, the breath of God blew over the face of the waters. We go from water to air we go from the womb to the world this is the birth of the universe i wonder if nicodemus is going okay what you're telling me is is i i got this diploma and i spent i spent a, a decade and a lot of money getting this diploma and you're telling me i don't understand genesis 1 1 well you know what i think you're wrong i think you're just being rude Jesus said to him, how is it that you're a teacher in Israel 
and you don't understand this. Jesus wouldn't let him off the hook. Jesus could see that he was the one who didn't understand. He knew Nicodemus knew if he was honest with himself that he's the one that didn't understand. He's trying to get it through the lenses that are the only lenses he's got. And they are the lenses of the law. The law is given by God to us so we can be the kind of people that God wants us to be. So he sees God through the lens of performance. This is what I do. If I can perform just right for God, it pleases God. And that's the way salvation comes. It comes from the law. If I can do everything just right, if I can be good and moral, if I can give the way I'm supposed to give, the amount that I'm supposed to give, if I pray the way I'm supposed to pray using the words that I'm supposed to pray, if I line up my life so that I do everything in accordance with the law, and that makes me righteous, and that's the way I get saved. He sees everything through the lenses of the law. So did Paul until he saw this, until he saw that light that blinded him on the road to Damascus. Learning to see God by going blind. And Jesus said to the Pharisees one time, you guys are blind. They said, we're not blind, you're blind. He said, no, because you say we see, I know you're blind. What an odd predicament to find yourself in. Like, for example, Paul, he, he thinks he understands everything. He's arresting Christians because they're heretics. They're not following the law. They're believing in a false Messiah. They're a problem. And he's, he's arresting them. He's locking them up. He held coats while for some guys who stoned Stephen to death. He's doing this in the name of God because God has laws and we've got to obey the laws. These are lawbreakers and we're going to correct them. He was policing everybody's behavior and faith and he was wrong. And the Lord got his attention and he realized he was wrong, that it, it was not by the law, but by the grace of God and Jesus Christ and his cross that we are saved. By that mercy, by that forgiveness, we are saved. It's by what God has done that we are saved, not by what we do. In fact, Paul wrote, the law is our curse. It was given in love. It was given in love to help us when we were children in the faith. Just like you give rules to kids at kindergarten, you know, you, you can't do this, you can't do that. You know, you can't push on the playground. You can't look at somebody else's work. You have to use these crayons. You have to follow these rules. You have to stand in line. You have to not talk now. There are rules. You give rules to kids to keep them in line the best that you can. But when you grow up, as Paul said, when you grow up, when you mature, when you become an adult, you need more than just blind law. It doesn't, it doesn't do it. Because if you go by the law uh, and measure your salvation, guess what? You're never saved. You can't keep the law. Paul saw it. He saw it's, a, it's cursing us because we're putting our faith in something that we absolutely cannot perform or do. He said, oh my gosh, God came and saved us by grace to release us from the prison of the law, from the curse of the law, from the trap of being well behaved and obsessing on the rules all the time. These rules can't save us. They're cursing us. How can we get free? How can we... How can we be released from this bondage? Jesus knew. He was staring at Nicodemus. He knew what Nicodemus needed, but Nicodemus didn't. He came in the dark wanting to be born, and he didn't know how. He didn't know how to get from the dark, deep, chaotic waters of the womb into the light and the air of freedom. He wanted to, but he didn't know how. So Jesus kept answering his question. He said, how can I be born again? And Jesus said, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water. In other words, yes, Nicodemus, I'll join you in your literalism. Yes, you're born from water, the waters of the mother's womb. But you also have to be born of air. The baby comes into the world, and if it doesn't breathe, it doesn't have life. It has to breathe air from water to air. And I know Nicodemus was just staring at him. Because the next thing Jesus says, he has to say, because Nicodemus isn't saying anything. Nicodemus is sitting there being confounded, confused, and astonished. So Jesus says to him, seeing that on his face, because Jesus sees with kingdom eyes, he says, don't be astonished. Why are you astonished? 
Don't be confused. Don't be confounded. Don't let it, don't let it freak you out that I said you, you must be born again. Listen, and he explains. He says, the wind blows where it will. You can't see it, but you know it's there. You can feel it. You don't know where it came from because you didn't see it coming. And you don't know where it goes, but you know it left because you can feel it pass you by. Be like that, Nicodemus, and you'll be free. What in the world is he telling him to do? And why is it so powerful? Why do I feel it now? Why do you feel it now? We go, we spend so much trying, we try so hard to please God. We try so hard to be good people. We try so hard to be a good husband or wife, a good parent or child. And when, when we fail, we just feel terrible. And then we beat ourselves up for it and punish ourselves for it. We, we just want, we want to be free. He says, that's what I'm telling you, Nicodemus, the wind is free. When you breathe, you're free. You're free from the darkness. You're free from the chaotic waters of the womb. You're free, free from that primeval mystery and, and formlessness. And you come into the light and you come into the air and you're born. And Nicodemus looked right into Jesus' eyes after all this. And he said, and I quote according to John, how can these things be? How can they be? And Jesus said, are you a teacher? Are you a teacher in Israel, of God's people? And you don't understand these things? I've told you about earthly things. Remember I told you about being born from the water? And then I told you about being born in the air and in the light? I've told you about earthly things. If you, if you don't understand what I'm saying right now, how are you going to... How are you going to understand when I really start to talk about heavenly things? This is the door. This is the birth. This is, this is where you crown. This is where you come out. This is, this is where, this is your passage. This is your rite of passage, Nicodemus. You've got to get this. This is the door. You're at your moment. This is the birth moment. This is your birthday. It's your birthday. Get ready. And then he said to him, just as Moses, see, he brings up the law because that's what he knows. He knows that that's what Nicodemus wants. He says, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, Nicodemus, so must the son of man be lifted up. And whoever believes in him will have eternal life. Did Nicodemus get it? There is no indication that he got it. The indication later that he might have gotten it is, is that he tried to defend Jesus to the Sanhedrin once, according to John. He was involved with Joseph of Arimathea taking care of Jesus' body after they took him down from the cross. So he's around. He's there. He's visiting. For some reason, he's still listening. He sees his birth in what Jesus is saying and what Jesus is offering. It really is a, a predicament, isn't it? If we like to play things by the book, we just want to know what the steps are. And if you want to know religious steps, just go to the bookstore. They'll give you four, four steps to spiritual freedom, six steps to your next spiritual level. They'll tell you all the steps to salvation. They'll give you lots of rules and um, 10 rules for spiritual leaving, le uh, living to uh, uh, Five steps to spirit to uh, success in life in in the spirit. We got we got plenty of people selling you something. I don't think Jesus was selling anything to Nicodemus. I think he was just telling him the truth. He was telling him that it's not by following the steps that you get anything. It's by seeing the truth right in front of you. Jesus saw that Nicodemus was in the dark just because he came by night. He knew he was thinking about being born because he started talking about where Jesus came from. It all came together for Jesus because Jesus perceives kingdom sight. And he's trying to teach it to him. But what does the wind and being free like the wind have to do with anything religious? 
Well, it doesn't have anything to do with anything religious. I was, I close with this. I was watching the baseball game yesterday on the TV with Patricia. And I noticed that the umpires were the same and the rules for the game were the same and the players were the same and they were throwing the ball and they were hitting the ball, but there was no one in the stands. We were all watching from television because of the virus. And I was watching one of the players walk up to the plate and I realized you can know all the rules of baseball. You can know every single rule as well as the umpires, maybe even better. You can know how many feet it is to the mound and how many feet it is to first base. You can now know how deep it is in right, center, and left. You can know how fast the ball is traveling. You can know all the stats on all the players and still not have the joy of playing the game. You can get a check for millions of dollars to play that game these days, but it doesn't make you love it. It doesn't make the smell of the glove remind you of childhood. The, the look of the green grass, how beautiful it is just to be in that field. The exertion of pitting yourself against the best to bring out the best in you. You can know all the rules and still not play. I think Jesus was calling Nicodemus forth. Stop obsessing on the rules and live. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So, good morning, Al Rock from South Carolina. I'm glad you're here this morning, and I'm glad to see so many people here. Jean Martino. Hey, Jean. Hey, May Ann May's back. Hey, Ann. From Bentonia, Mississippi. Jean is up. I forget the name of that area where he's in, but it's up north of Nashville, almost to Kentucky, I think. And uh, who else do I see? Hey, Pat. Hey, Sandra. Hey, Paula. Hey, Joe. Hey, Dale. Hey, Karen. CJ's back. Good morning, Mr. Gary. <laughs> Kitty Cron Bargeron is here. I think, Kitty, aren't you a friend? I'm trying to remember. Aren't you a friend of Jim's? Um, Elaine is here. Dita is here again. Hey, Lori. Tell the worm good morning. And Jim and Ruby are here. And Donna McCain is here. And Marlene is here. Wow. A lot of people here from a lot of different places this morning. Well, it's wonderful to see all of you. Let me let go of the phone here. I'm just going to scroll back down. So now we also have Erica and uh, Kia on the telephone. Um, they called in on Patricia's phone on a, on a conference line, and they are joining us, and they could hear but not see. Well, how are y'all doing? It's very good to see you. Um, even though I don't see you, I see your pictures. A bunch of people here today. Westmoreland, Tennessee is where Gene is from. Westmoreland, that's right. I went up to Westmoreland. The last time I was there, I saw the eclipse back in 2017. At uh, I went to Gino's farm. Um, Paula says, I look very relaxed. Well, welcome to the beach at South Carolina, right? I haven't shaved. I'm wearing a t-shirt. Think the Lord will forgive me or am I breaking the rules? It's all about the rules, right, Patricia? If you don't, if you don't wear the right thing, God doesn't right. approve. That's it. That's yeah. it. that's the way it works, right? You gotta, yeah, you gotta. If you don't put your collar on, Jesus ain't listening. Isn't that right? Yeah. Say amen. Amen. Listen, see. Uh, a kitty, kitty is uh, Laurie Dozier's friend. That's right. That's right. I'm remembering now. Um, kitty, you all, you you all used to come down and visit. I remember now. Sorry about that. My my, my brain went. Haywire for a second. I am on vacation though. I, I have I have uh, the right to. Ooh, I'm I'm low on battery. Oops. Okay. I got 15% battery. If it dies, it probably won't. But if it dies, you'll understand. We won't be here much longer anyway. Uh, we're gonna have prayer. Um, I have the list from last week. We added Amy. We added uh, Steve and Mary Lou. 
we uh, added Brandon and Candace. We uh, we prayed. We added uh, John and Cheryl. Uh, we prayed for the schools and kids going back to school and all the issues that are going on with COVID. Um, we played for the prayed for the family of Ed Dillard. <clears throat> we prayed. Uh, we added uh, Michelle Slinger, and we got an update on uh, Greg Bell. So if you have any other updates for prayers or any other announcements, you can type them. Uh, CJ is at her parents' house, and they can see me too. And your cat, Allie, is missing me, which means my cat, Allie, is missing you. Oh, well, okay. When we add up how many people watch today, do we, do we include the cat? Yeah, I think we'll include we'll include the the cat in the total count of those attending worship. How about that? Um, well, hello to CJ. Hello to your folks. Um, John and Cheryl are both uh, doing much better with the COVID. Yeah. John and Cheryl are doing better with the COVID. Patricia says. And Brandon and his wife are both discharged from hospital. And Brandon and and uh, Candace are home from the hospital. Yeah, Brandon. Okay. Says that. You know, uh, I sent out to quite a number of you a link that showed um, a lot of statistics and graphs and charts and stuff on where we are with COVID over time. And one of the things that I noted about it that was hopeful is that, that the death rate has been going down steeply um, with COVID. Um, and hopefully now it's plateaued. I think it's plateaued again uh, in terms of new cases. The problem is, is that in Fulton County, we doubled the new cases about two weeks ago. It, it shot back up, the new cases. So even though people are not dying in the numbers that they were before, for whatever reason, we still had too many cases for the bishop and the cabinet to feel comfortable about us continuing to meet in person. So we'll just keep an eye on what they say and see what this... Uh, this brings. I'll let you all know the first thing I know anything about whether we can meet in person again. Um, Paula says yes. Uh, my cat usually watches with me when I'm at home. Well, that's true, CJ. I've seen the pictures you've sent me with your cat sitting there watching, but your parents are watching this time, I hear. But not the cat. That's just too bad. I wonder if... Uh, I wonder if uh, David Worm's dog is watching, watching up there. He's got a dog about the size of a polar bear. And it's white, too. It looks like a polar bear, doesn't it? Yeah. Laurie, Laurie is the polar bear watching? Okay. So uh, we, have, we have quite a prayer list right now. Several new people, as I mentioned. We're still remembering, of course, uh, Kathleen. Kathleen went went in and out of uh, the emergency room um, about a week ago, maybe a week and a half ago, and it was wasn't anything serious. They sent her right home, um, so it was you know it was no big deal. But continue to pray for Kathleen, and she's over a hundred years old, so I'm sure she'd appreciate the prayers. We're still praying for Scott in his recovery. Um, Jonah, uh, who is uh, from Georgia friend of mine from uh, Ancestry.com and her family. Uh, we're continuing to pray for them. And... Junie sent another check. Oh yeah, Junie. We heard from Junie again. She's faithful. She sends cards. She sends checks. She's something else. Mm -hmm. Alright, any other announcements or any other uh, prayer requests? I'm not seeing any... You added that one, Patricia. Patricia is Angel Monet. That's Patricia. <clears throat> well, why don't we pray together um, to close our worship time this morning? Lord, give us give us eyes with which to see your kingdom. It's confounding to us. But we know there's something. There's something. Give us ears with which to hear Jesus' truth. We, we don't always get it, but the, we feel it. 
if we could just get our minds to comprehend what our hearts know about his love and grace and forgiveness. When, when, with a little help, maybe we can see that the cruelty and the ugliness of the cross is also the beauty of grace and our home. If we can comprehend these seeming contradictions, these paradoxes, maybe we could see you more clearly and who you are. We're worried about some folks. We're worried about anybody that's got the COVID and we, we just want to be over this. We're, we, we've had enough. Lord, heal us and help us to move past this and move back to some sort of normalcy. We're praying for those who've had it and who are recovering from it and those who've lost family. We pray for Stephen, Mary Lou and Brandon and Candace and John and Cheryl. We pray for Amy and Karen and everybody in their family. We pray for Michelle, Paula's friend from childhood. We pray for the family who lost Ed Diller. We pray for Scott and his recover, continuing recovery. We pray for, for especially for all the people who are gathered with us now, either by live stream or on the phone. Bless everyone. Let us see and hear. Let us perceive and understand the miracle that you are, the gift that you are. We pray all of these things for Jonah, for Amy, for Amina, for Sherry, for Junie, for Rose, Kathleen, Nancy, Ricardo, and everyone on the list. And Greg Bell. We pray all these in the name of uh, Jesus who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Father, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Before my battery runs out, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And by the way, remember to breathe. Remember to see. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Y'all have a great day. Amen. Bye from Amen. South Carolina.